Eye impairments that contribute to addiction as well as are worse because of addiction. Uh, review behavioral management issues with substance abuse with both TBI and addiction, and then talk about resources. So uh, the conundrum, I love that word, it's one of my words these days, it's a paradoxical problem. It, it, it's a dilemma. It's, these slides are too small for me to read from on here. <laughs> um, and nothing goes as expected. So you've probably heard about people having, perfect, thank you, um, a paradoxical reaction to medication. So I have a, an agitated brain injury patient in the ICU right now in um, uh, another state who is having a paradoxical reaction to Seroquel. So the trauma doctors are giving him high doses of Seroquel every six hours, trying to get him less agitated so they can move him out of the ICU onto a rehab unit. And, um, and they're, they're treating him backwards. They're giving him IV Ativan, which is contraindicated in brain injury. They're giving him high doses of Seroquel and a homeopathic dose of Depakote. So as a consultant for Paradigm, I'm talking with these trauma doctors and educating them, you've got to get him off the Ativan. You've got to reduce the Seroquel because he's having a paradoxical reaction. And you've got to titrate up the Depakote. How many of you see Depakote used for agitated behavior? Or mood instability, right? It's, it's our drug of choice for Depico. agitation. So that is working. And now I just got an email today that we got her patient on to rehab. Um, and he doesn't even need a net bed any longer. So that's what paradoxical means. Uh, and that's what paradigm does. Um, definitions of substance abuse disorder is SUD. If you're reading the literature, you see it. Uh, abbreviated to SUD. We love our three-letter acronyms. OUD is opioid use disorder. OOD is opioid overdose. Diversion is getting a prescription from your doctor and then turning around and selling it because you need money or you want to buy heroin or trading it for street drugs or maybe a family member is actually taking it and not you. So diversion is a big problem, especially when insurance coverage is good and you're quote unquote getting free drugs um, and then there's addiction so addiction is a treatable chronic medical disease there's a lot of stigma surrounding addiction and i always felt like you can't just call that guy an addict and dismiss him as you know life's uh you know byproduct and, and there's nothing you can do for them it's a disease, and we have a lot of good treatment models for addiction now. It involves complex interactions among brain circuits, genetics, the environment, and an individual's life experience. So where have you heard that before? When we talk about TBI, right? So, especially when we talk about an individual's life experience of repetitive TBI. So the disease of addiction affects a person's brain and behavior and leads to the inability to control the use of the legal or illegal drugs. And here's the caveat, the use continues despite the harm it causes. So how many times do we have an alcoholic with the disease of addiction to alcohol who's dying of liver failure from hepatitis and alcoholic hepatitis, and they can't stop drinking. They're dying because they're drinking, and they continue drinking. You can't reason with a person that's addicted unless you put them in a very, very uh, specific type of program, and they have to be willing, um, and it's part of the conundrum. So I'm gonna give you a case that will lead through the rest of my talk, and Mary, uh, was sent to me by a kid, a um, adjuster in Michigan, and I, I think she knew that I had a thing for dogs <laughs> and underdogs, right? So Mary uh, was 32 years old, with moderately severe TBI that was three years prior, multiple trauma, 
lots of fractures, lots of joint injuries, prior history of substance abuse before her injury using meth, cocaine, THC. She developed chronic pain and, and drug-seeking behavior. She was kind of lost to follow up by her primary treating physicians from the original trauma. She became addicted to opioids, which was Norco. She tried and failed to live independently. Her family was estranged, her boyfriend left her. And three years post-injury, she was failing to thrive in an apartment by herself. She was a mess. What a conundrum. So 